this wonderful day of the year, this Easter Sunday, and uh, and uh, we're all sorts of uh, things to talk about and things uh, to say uh, about this uh, this day. Uh, when we turn to the scriptures, this event, this resurrection event, is, is mentioned in all four Gospels. So we know that this was important to the disciples. Uh, to, to record this, what goes on, what was going on with the disciples uh, when they came to that tomb uh, so long ago. And uh, today what we're doing is, uh, I pulled out Mark, uh, most likely because, uh, well, I know why, uh, because uh, this is what the lectionary calls for this year. And so as I was reading over uh, Mark's version of the disciples encountering this empty tomb, uh, and Jesus' body not there, I was just, I was drawn to, why were the disciples afraid? Why did they come to this empty tomb? And after seeing all of these things, why, why were they afraid? Now, the message, it doesn't come out there, the message version, that's the version that we use here for, in our services. Uh, it doesn't say uh, that they were afraid. Uh, how he translated, they were stunned and, and, and had nothing to say anymore. But when we look at the NRSV and we, when we look at the Greek, we see that, that they were, that, that they said nothing anymore, for they were afraid. Now, I, I, I ponder this, I wonder this because, well, why would they be afraid? And this verb for afraid, you know, this is fear. Like, well, why would they be afraid? I mean, they've walked with Jesus for three years now. They've, they've, saw his, they've seen his miracles. They know how much he loved him. Uh, this is something that they wanted, the, 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 you know, to be following God. You know, all of a sudden, why are these things that he said that were going to have, have happened, uh, that he said were going to happen, and, and they're actually happening, why were they afraid? You know, why were they afraid of this? Now, there was other fear that was going on these three days that Jesus has been in the tomb. Uh, the Roman soldiers were, they were thought that the Roman soldiers were after them because they thought Jesus was this, uh, was this a rebel that was going to lead a rebellion there in Jerusalem, which is why they wanted to, to crucify him and get rid of the, the rebel leader. Also, the, uh, the religious leaders, they were probably out to get the disciples too. They, they got Jesus, but then they wanted to get his followers. So there was, there was this fear in there for three days that the disciples have been wondering what's going to happen to them. Are they going to be hunted down by the Roman soldiers? Are they going to be hunted down by uh, by by the religious leaders? So I get I get fear in that that area, that fear. But when they go to the the tomb, and Matt and uh, and John and Peter and all the disciples when they're and the women there when they're in the tomb, they they're afraid. And I wonder why. Why were they afraid? Now I realize uh, I, I asked that because I, I would say I wouldn't be afraid, you know, but I have 2,000 years of Christian history in front of me, don't I? And I've heard this story again and again and again, and I, I realized that I don't, I question their fear because I know the story. I wasn't living the story the way they were. And so I started unpacking the, 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 uh, the, the concept of, of fear, of being afraid. And we have these negative connotations, don't we? We don't like to talk about, we don't like to be in fear. If we see this loving God, right? You know, how many of you kind of have this knee-jerk reaction when you talk about fearing God or, or, or fearing the Lord Jesus Christ because this fear is kind of negative. It has negative connotations. But as I, as I started unpacking what fear is, when we look and we look at the times that we're afraid or we have this fear that is over us, I think that fear, that emotion is the realization that we are, that we're, that we have have in that moment that we're powerless, that we don't have control, that we don't know what's coming next. And I've realized that when we have fear, we realize who we are. We realize what power we actually have. We realize that we're not fully in control. Fear has more to do to say about what's going on in us and what's going on outside. And so I think this is what's going on with the disciples. This is the fear that they're talking about. 
So let's look at this fear that what's going on with with what's happening. I think that they're they're afraid and that they're that they have this fear because they realize that the power of God is too awesome for them to understand. You know, that this power of God that, that Jesus is resurrected from the dead, they're realizing that reality of sitting there, realizing that they went to they expect a dead body. This is what their life has always told them about, that if somebody dies and you bury them, if you go back three days later, the body is there, right? Isn't that what our mind and our rationale tells us? That if we bury somebody, I did the math this week, I've buried 30 people since I've been a pastor here at St. John's United Methodist Church. Every person, all 30, they didn't come back to have that. No matter how much we wanted them to, no matter how much they did, no matter how great they were, they didn't come back. We buried them, and that was it. And I think we all have people in our lives, or all the sort of things in our lives, and if it's dead, it's there, isn't it? That's our reality. That's what we see in our control. So here the disciples going there, and they, they're expecting to see a dead body, but yet they hear this amazing, wonderful news. That the power of God has resurrected Jesus Christ. And I think they're starting to get it. They're seeing the actual power of God. What God can do. And that's what today is all about. This fear that God that we should have is this, is this realization, this in-your-face realization of the total awesome power of God in our lives. When's the last time that you allowed God to blow your mind? When is the last time you allowed God to blow your mind? My hunch is you're a lot like me, and you have a nice laid out plan for God. Don't you? God, here's what I want. Here's, you know, do this, please do that. And we all, we do please, right? How I many of you ask God, please? Please do this, please do that. If you could, anybody do it if you could? You know, if you could do this. If, we, you know, we have a nice laid out plan for God, don't we? Don't we? Amen? Can I get an amen? And then if we don't have an isolated out plan for God, we, we question God, right? You know, God, well, why do these bad things happen? How many of you ask that? Why is this somebody who is innocent, who is, who is a, a great person, why did they die too soon? Or why did they get cancer or this? And, and when we think that we can figure out the mind of God that we have, that we're smarter than God. Have you ever thought you were smarter than God and questioned God? You know, why did you do this? Why did you allow this to happen? And, 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 we, and we just, that uh, formula in our mind, it just doesn't work. We, some, a lot of times we think we're just as smart, if not smarter, than God. A lot of times, most of the time, I think if we're really honest, we never allow room and time for God to blow our minds because we have it set in certain ways. When is the last time you allowed God to do something amazing, miraculous, impossible? The disciples, I think, were afraid and had fear because they were witnessing firsthand the mind-blowing, impossible power of God. I think they're also afraid because uh, they all denied Jesus and ran away from him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and if uh, uh, you know, we know all of them except for John. John was kind of there, but he ran away naked at one point. So you know, there's John probably wondering what Jesus is going to say to him because he ran away naked. Here's Peter, who's denied Jesus three times, looked at him and, and cursed, the, cursed the Jesus' name and all of that. And, and here they all—they've all ran away from Jesus. I bet they were afraid, like, "Oh no, he's back! What's he going to do now?" We ran away from him. We thought he was dead. Now he's alive. And what he actually said and taught, we get it. And whoa, this is God. What's God going to do to me after I've led, left him and denied him and ran away from him after I messed up big time in such a way that led to the death of God's only son? I bet they were afraid and scared out of their mind also just going to go, what is going to happen now when he comes back to me? Have you ever been caught up in this sin? Or caught up in something you know you shouldn't be doing? Or something that's hurting you? Or how you've hurt someone else and you're afraid that 
What's God going to do to me if I actually confess my sins? If I go to God or go to church? A lot of times we're really scared to bring all our garbage, all our junk to God. Because He is this holy, perfect God. But what I love about Jesus is when He comes back to these disciples, when He comes back to Peter, when He comes back to John, when He comes back to them all, He never says... Remember when you ran away? Remember when you did nothing? He doesn't do any of that. Instead, he breathes his Holy Spirit upon them. He refreshes and, re and, and, and reminds them of the power and the possibilities that we have when we have a relationship with God. He seems like Jesus, when he comes back and he confronts us in a, this loving way that seems to empower us to do his will in a deeper and fresher and more meaningful way. When's the last time you allowed God to come into your mess? When's the last time you allowed God to come into your life? When's the last time you asked God to forgive you of your sins? Of your mistakes and failures? Sometimes we're hesitant to do that because we're wondering if God's going to smite us pour out his wrath upon us, judge us. But this is not the God that I read all throughout the Bible. It's not the God that I read here on this Easter Sunday. I read about a God who comes to us and breathes his life-giving Holy Spirit upon us, who says, I'm going to look for me. I'm going to be here with you. I'm going, I have a job for you to do. I think the disciples were afraid because they were wondering what was going to happen if Jesus came back, this confrontation. And instead, what they got was a God who was ready to forgive them and tell them, hey, I've got a job for you to do. When's the last time you went to God to seek for forgiveness? To hear these life-giving words of, I have a job for you to do. I also think the other reason they might have been scared and might have had fear was, what is next? You know, I mean, they've been following Jesus for three years, right? They, he's risen the people from the dead. He's made the lame walk. I mean, have you ever seen somebody who can't walk, walk? And the blind, have you ever nobody blind? He made the blind see. And they saw all of these miracles. 5,000 people there were fed with two fish and a loaf of bread. Like all of these miracles, all of these wonderful things. They're probably what now he's resurrected from the dead. What's next? What could possibly be, what could happen next to us? What's going to happen next? And the, the brother in the spirit is like, what's going to happen to me? Is he going to call me to do this job? Is he going to call me to die like this? What is going to happen next now that the dead is raised again? Just like he said. This is where I think we can all fit in right here today. What's next? You know, God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of you. What this Easter Sunday is all about is realizing the power of God to forgive our sins, the power of God to transform our lives in new and powerful and profound ways, but also the power of God that breathes in us the strength and his possibilities that sends us out. And we should have this all-filledness about us, this, this fear in us going, what is next? my relationship with God. I hope that today truly is this day of new beginnings where you do see that God can do impossible and awesome things in your life. And if you've submitted your life to God, if you're calling out for God to forgive me and, and God to be active in your life, I pray that you have this fear in you this day of going, what's next? And know that the next plan that God has for you is to build you up, to pour out his love upon you, to do awesome, mind-blowing things in and through you in your life today and for the rest of your life. And that's why we give all thanks and praise to God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to Stand and let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Let us affirm our faith.